A glow stick. Who has ever wondered about the science behind a glow stick? <laughs> well, I'm going to teach it anyway. Oh, Derby, you actually have a question? Yeah. Who's that guy? Huh. I guess I kind of get how being a kid teacher is impressive, but a grown man high school student? That's just sad. Hey! What's sad about it? He's not a student. He's a television writer here to observe me. He thought a sitcom about a kid teacher might make a good TV show. <laughs> Please. How many stories can you squeeze out of that weak premise? By season three, you'll be relying on the arrival of outside characters, like a hacky TV writer coming to observe the kid teacher. Well, it doesn't matter. We're here to learn about chemiluminescence which is way more exciting than some showbiz bigwig, right? Right? A show about a kid teacher? I can't picture it. I mean, what would the opening title sequence even look like? Chemiluminescence is achieved when diphenyl oxalate reacts with hydrogen peroxide. See? That is some boring TV. I'm your show. Picture me in a downtown apartment. And are you ready for the twist? I have a roommate. And there's a twist on the twist. We're nothing alike. The girls will be here any minute. Hurry up and get out here. Why are you yelling? I'm standing right next to you. Oh, no. They're here. I'm so nervous I have goosebumps. Or as I call them, bumps. You're so uptight. What's gotten into you? Oh, that. Wait a second. You're not even female. Just open the door. Sisters. Please come in. Help yourself to some birdseed. Thank you. I am feeling a bit peckish. <laughs> Looks like we found our perfect matches. I don't want to ruffle your feathers, but what say I ruffle your feathers? <laughs> so, you're a goose? Any relation to Mother Goose? She's my mother. I love her stories. But I always fall asleep before the end. I'm just going to assume Jack and Jill got that pail of water without incident. Derby, can you come give me a hand with the snacks? Since you're the one with the hands. Derby, this date is a disaster. What are you talking about? It's going great. Every time my date opens her mouth, I can feel my IQ dropping. Soon I'll be as dumb as a duck. Wait, you're not a duck? I'm just going to kick her out. If you kick her out, my date will leave. Well, that's your problem. You know what your problem is? You're too short to reach the doorknob. Now, where were we? I believe I had you eating out of the palm of my hand. Hey, where's my tall drink of water? The goose said he'd get me one. He's in the kitchen. I'll go get him. Here I am, the goose. Not a duck, apparently. Aw, I missed you, sweetie. Where's my sweetie? I'll go find him. No, no. Don't you lift a feather. I'll go get him. There you are, Derby. Where were we? 
I believe we were at... Where were we? Where's that silly goose? I'll go get him. <laughs> There's my lucky duck. Would you make up your mind? Am I a goose or a duck? Wow, you've changed. No, I haven't. I've been either a goose or duck my whole life. Is something going on here? Where's Derby? I'll go get him. I see what's going on here. You're half man, half goose. And I think this experiment will get a glowing review from all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Echo, you have a question? Yes. For the writer. You should base a show on my life. Oh, you mean like when you and I are married? A romantic comedy about a brilliant scientist and his beautiful, loving wife? No. I mean like after we break up and I move to Paris to find true love. <laughs> The boss, check it out. I thought the Louvre could raise some money to buy some newer art. If we sold t-shirts, I put one on that mannequin. Louvre is in the air. That is not a mannequin. That is one of the world's most famous sculptures, the Venus de Milo. Isn't it pronounced Milo? I pronounce it Milo. The point is. You have disgraced this museum for the last time. I have no choice but to relieve you of your duties. You won't be needing this anymore. Or this. Hey, that beret is not part of my uniform. I know, but it is cliche. Now get out. Please, Monsieur Le Boss. I came to Paris to find true love. If I lose this job, I'll be forced to move home and settle into a loveless marriage with a science teacher. Yikes. All right, you have one more chance, but if you cause even the teeniest, tiniest problem, you'll be out on your derriere. Pardon my French. <laughs> Feather duster is made from goose or duck? Neither. It is made from feathers. <laughs> I have never seen anything so exquisitely beautiful. <laughs> I think you're cute too. One might even say, Louvre is in the air. One might also say, Je suis avec stupide. I don't know what that means, but it sounds so romantic. <laughs> Museum security, coming through. Miss Echo, you must be on the lookout. There are reports of a thief on the loose. He has struck every museum in Europe and the t-shirt shop down the street. <laughs> Not now. I'm trying to talk to... Where'd he go? Bits me. Some people are just good at sneaking in and out of places. <laughs> anyway, if you see anyone who could be the thief, let me know. You must look everywhere. Ah! <laughs> Even on the floor. Nope. Nothing here. Great. I just lost my chance at true love. Ah! <laughs> and probably my job. I am about to enter the room. Unexpectedly. At the worst possible moment. <laughs> to make sure none of the famous paintings have been uh, 
defaced. I have entered the room. I don't know what took me so long. Hmm. Something about this painting looks familiar. Oh, yes, that is right. It is the Mona Lisa, the most famous painting in the world. <laughs> well, since everything is fine here, I am about to enter the next room. Unexpectedly. That was close. Now to get out of here. I must guard these paintings all night with that thief on the loose. Funny how, even when no one is around, I don't speak French, my native language. until my job is done. Even though it is past my bedtime. That's it. I'll lull him to sleep. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Something, 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 ding, ding. You called? Oh! Supposed to be playing the bumbling French security guard. I am. <laughs> He's asleep. Time to sneak out. <laughs> oh no! It's the museum slash t shirt shop thief. <sighs> and unexpectedly, it's the only non museum employee with a speaking role. breathtaking. <laughs> Quite simply, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I must have it. Europe's most infamous art frame thief strikes again. Let's get glowing. <laughs> I heard there was someone from Hollywood here. Yeah, he's a writer. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I could pitch him my show idea. I need your help. You've come to the right place. I'm Private Ivy, P.I. <laughs> I want to hire you. My husband has been murdered. Oh, I don't do murders. For that, you need a private investigator. You're not a private investigator? Then what does the PI stand for? Private Ivy. <laughs> okay, well, I 
Guess I'll go. Not so fast. I know a criminal when I see one. <gasps> How did you know I murdered my science teacher husband? In my defense, it was a loveless marriage. I told you, I don't do murders. But this is unforgivable. A cheetah print skirt with a zebra print clutch? You never wear predator with prey. But that's not a crime. Yes, it is. A crime against fashion. I'm taking you downtown. To the mall. We'll pick you up some cute stuff. So, we're good on the murder, right? I'd gotten an anonymous tip that there was a fashion faux pas going down in a high school that takes place in a world unlike any I've ever seen. Who are you talking to? No one. This is my inner monologue. Why was this middle-aged student so confused? And what was he wearing? It's a burlap sack. Burlap is back. It was never in. Who did this to you? Well, if it isn't private, I'd be private, i Sergeant Burr, what are you doing here? I was just about to ask the exact same thing. In fact, Sergeant Byrne, what are you doing here? I'm here to tell Private Ivy, Private Ivy to get off my turf. Fine, I'll go. But only because your accessories disgust me. I hadn't fully left the scene when I discovered something mysterious. What was it? Burlap. It was burlap. There's some more over here. You might want to see where it leads. A voice outside my head told me I should see where it leads. <laughs> here you go. First one's free. You! All right, you got me. I wasn't making enough money on the beat. A sergeant's salary is not what it once was. It's more. But it's still not enough. So I knocked over a burlap sack factory. And when the security guard confronted me, I murdered him. Oh, there's a murder. Solving murders is more your thing. Good luck catching that killer. Sounds like a tough case. While you three were pitching your show ideas, everyone else was admiring these glowing beakers. When did those get here? When did you get here? <laughs> it's going to be cooler with the lights off. You have to be careful handling chemicals like these. Hey! Whoa! <laughs> it's okay. I've got a towel around here somewhere. That's not a towel. You grab someone's chest. Oh, I'm so sorry, Echo. It wasn't me. It was me. Whoa! I get that you made a mistake, but why did you linger? That's it! That's the show! You're really gonna make a show about him? No! I am gonna make a show about me! All kinds of freaks and losers are always coming up to me pitching their lousy show ideas. It's hilarious! You can even show snippets of their stupid ideas do like three in half an hour. I could go almost an entire episode without saying a word. This is goal! I told you I have my idea. Yeah, but you don't have my idea. I play a mild-mannered high school principal who turns into an even milder-mannered superhero. Ah! Oh, no! There's a construction worker dangling from that crane. This looks like a job for... The Hesitator. <laughs> Although it really is more of a job for the fire department. It's awfully high up. Plus, I really should have Mommy mend my sweater vest.
terrible idea. You should do a show about me as a teacher, juggling her career and her newborn triplets while trying to fend off a midlife crisis. Midlife? Mid? Who has heard of the War of 18... <laughs> Looks like someone needs their diaper changed. Me! It's very topical. In fact, it's happening right now. <laughs> you should hear about my show. <laughs> Who would win a race between Professor Vortex and Mr. Marvelous? Well, I would need to know the exact latitude and longitude of their start point, as well as the barometric pressure and the precise time of day. What does that have to do with anything? Mr. Marvelous is not a morning person. <laughs> oh, that must be that attractive babe who lives across the hall. Come in. Hey, guys. Hey. 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 <laughs> Sounds great, but I gotta run. That car's headed straight for him! This looks like a job for... <laughs> the Hesitator. <laughs> Though he is pretty far away. And I'm not wearing good shoes for running. Plus, 